On December 4th, 2014, Bishop Richard Gordon saw a prophetic screen that fell from the sky, and a video and remote was given to him to press play. As he pressed play, many scenes began to flash rapidly before his eyes that spanned from September 2015 to September 2018. Some were glorious, others were horrific. Many of these are unstoppable, others can be averted through intercession. Bishop Richard Gordon would declare some of these prophecies at the annual crossover service held at NCMI, New Covenant Ministries International, yearly. This was on December 31st, 2014. These prophecies would further be documented on his website on February 1st, 2015. The following are the documentations, the declarations, and the fulfillment of these prophecies. You see this year, I am determined that there are some things I must do this year. I must accomplish this year. But I'm sorry, I can only tell you what I hear God saying to me. I can only speak as a prophet. I am not here to tell you what you want to hear. I am here to tell you the truth. For the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall be free. And there are some things that God has shown me concerning 2015. 2015 is a mixed year. It will either make you or break you. Hear me. This year, 2015, I see some things happening. Number one, I see a great earthquake taking place in the Caribbean region. I prophesied it in 2011. It hit 80. Anybody remember that? Now, there's an earthquake and a shaping. I don't, know, I don't know exactly where. But it will be between 7.2 to 8.3 on the rector scale. Bishop went on to prophesy that a mighty earthquake would be hitting two significant nations, one in the Caribbean region and one elsewhere, measuring 8.3 and 7.2 on the Richter scale. We see this quite evident in Nepal and in Chile. I'm John Voles at the CNN Center. An 8.3 magnitude earthquake has struck off the Chilean coast, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The epicenter is about 50 kilometers west of the city of Ayapec. Ayapec is about three hours north of the capital, Santiago. The city's mayor says all lights have been knocked out, and right now it's difficult to access the damage. An 8.3, Greta, as you know, is a very it's big... Huge. It's a huge earthquake. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there will be widespread damage of any kind. It means everybody would feel it. But it doesn't mean buildings are coming down and people are hurt. In well, a worst-case scenario, I, they I could, but we just really mean. don't know yet. I'll tell you the, the biggest issue. I mean, like right now, you know, that's great news. Nobody seems to be hurt. That's fantastic news. Another massive quake rattling the country of Nepal. A search and rescue operation now underway. A powerful 7.3 quake hits again. The death toll at the moment at 42. That number expected to rise. At least 1,000 others are injured. That shock triggering landslides like this one here toppling buildings and causing panic yet again in the streets. It all comes less than three weeks after another devastating quake killed 8,000 people in that country. Since then, there have been a lot of aftershocks as well, and now a second major earth earthquake unfolding. Uh, so when you're speaking to folks over there, what are they saying to you, Sumnima? As it pertains to the nations, Bishop Richard o. Gordon prophesied that 2015 would be a year of transition and change of power for almost all nations holding a general election within the year the opposition would rise to power. Two, I see political upheaval. I see St. Kitts. I see Trinidad. And I see a turn of power. I see opposition coming to power. I'm not talking about Jamaica right now. I see opposition coming to power because I don't know what time for election yet. In 2015, opposition coming to power in U.S. Opposition coming to power in St. Kitts. Opposition coming to power in Trinidad and Tobago. In the Caribbean alone, there were four major general elections held. Namely, in Guyana, May 11, 2015. In St. Kitts, February 16, 2015. In Trinidad and Tobago, September 7th and in Tortola, June 8, 2015. Of the four Caribbean countries that had elections in 2015, the opposition came to power with the exception of Tortola, 
where Bishop prophesied specifically that the incumbent or seating party would remain in power. It must be noted that he also declared these prophecies on the soil of the particular nation throughout his Caribbean tour. There are many other countries outside of the Caribbean that followed suit as the opposing parties rose to power, just as Bishop prophesied. This list is, however, too extensive for this medium. He also prophesied that riots would break out in the streets in many states across the U.S. Riots in the streets of America. He also prophesied that there would be the threat of terrorism in the Gulf states of the U.S., specifically to watch New Orleans and Texas. Also, a threat would be coming from the sea in the Gulf region of the U.S., he declared that terrorism will break out again in New York, in the Times Square area, and in many countries across Europe, France, Denmark, Sweden, Spain, and England. These all have been fulfilled. U.S. intelligence is studying a new ISIS propaganda video appearing to threaten New York City. It shows a man praying before making what appears to be a bomb for a suicide belt, which he then wears under his jacket. The slick production includes shots of TGI Fridays in Times Square and the gap in Herald Square near Macy's, along with footage of taxi and groups of pedestrians. It's followed by a close-up of a pin being pulled from a grenade before the screen goes to black. And then, of course, you just saw French President Hollande addressing the Paris attacks. At one point, words flash on the screen that read, what's coming next will be far worse and far bitter. Earlier this week, an ISIS tape appeared to threaten Washington, D.C. There's been a heavy police presence across New York City since the Paris attacks, especially at key transit hubs like Grand Central Terminal. In a statement, the NYPD said the video reaffirms the message that New York City remains a top terrorist target. While there is no current or specific threat to the city, at this time we will remain at a heightened state of vigilance. We're continuing to follow the latest developments on the terrorist attacks in Paris. We want to bring in Zusa Kover. She was inside mm -hmm. the concert hall, the Bataclan, and managed to escape 10 minutes before the carnage began. Those hostages were taken. Zusa, thanks for being with us. Hey, hey guys. So explain to us exactly what happened, where you were, and how it all went down. Yeah, um, we were a bit late for the concert, so we went straight up to the balcony because it was really packed. It was a sold-out event. Um, so it's like an old theater, um, but they don't have chairs downstairs, but they still have the chairs upstairs. Um, so we were kind of sitting up there, and between two songs, uh, we just hear this um, shooting going on. But we, first, we didn't know, like, if it's shooting. Like, that's, that's not something you expect on a gig. So um, we were just trying to figure out what's happening, and then uh, we just see that everyone is laying on the floor downstairs. So um, we start to think through what to do. And then um, we mir miraculously we get out the shooting. The situation in Copenhagen uh, is obviously unfolding, but from what we understand, one man responsible for two shooting attacks yesterday. Your thoughts? Well, they'll do the forensics to find out if they were tied to any ISIS recruiter or any uh, aspirational encouragement. Unfortunately, what, with, with what you see with ISIS is they are looking for that aspirational encouragement everywhere. Uh, Denmark, United States, Australia, Canada, and you're seeing people take action. So the one place that they believe they can get credibility is any blasphemous talk about the Prophet Muhammad is, that's just currency for them uh, in order to encourage these folks who might be on the edge of radicalization to bring them over because then it's more noble, if you will, in the eyes of those folks. Swedish authorities are on high alert after a terrorist warning was painted on the walls of a restaurant in Gothenburg, Sweden. The graffiti warns, convert or die, and the caliphate is here. The city, about 300 miles southwest of Stockholm, on the west coast of Sweden, is home to the largest community of Muslims in that country. Authorities estimate at least 150 locals have left the city to join ISIS. A cell of sympathizers is believed to remain. 
Isis is bent on drawing the world into a final apocalyptic battle which will bring about a new age of Islamic domination. They have already declared the caliphate and controlled the beak, the prophesied location of their final battle. A massive global wave of terror attacks is expected to draw the world into battle with ISIS, and those attacks could come at any time. Video released by Spanish police shows the moment four men who are suspected of being Islamist militants were arrested. The two pairs of brothers who are thought to be part of an Islamist militant group were arrested in Spain's North African enclave of Ceuta. This comes as Spain has stepped up its security following the attacks in Paris this month where Islamist gunmen killed 17 people. Spain's interior ministry said in a statement that the four men they arrested over the weekend have a very similar profile to those who carried out the Paris attacks. Police say they found a gun, combat uniform, Spanish car license plates and machetes when they made the arrests following a raid. It's thought the brothers have already carried out aggressive online campaigns on internet forums trying to recruit people to fight in Syria and Iraq. All right, breaking news on a possible terror attack in London today. Police say a man armed with a large knife stabbed three people in an East London underground tube station. It happened around 7 o'clock local time. You're looking at video from Twitter that appears to show the alleged incident. Police subdued the suspect with a stun gun, then arrested him. One stabbing victim does have serious injuries. Two others suffered minor injuries, we're told. Joining me now on the phone from London, our international correspondent, Phil Black. Phil, what do you know? He also prophesied that there would be problems in the stock market in late August to September that would create a panic. I see a sudden crash on Wall Street round about the month of August. <laughs> the sudden crash on Wall Street that Bishop Richard Gordon prophesied would then be called the flash crash of 2015. This occurred on August 24th, and as he prophesied, this would be in late August. Live from the Script Studios, this is San Diego's news source, 10 News. Take a look. We are showing you the big board live. You can see the Dow has gradually eased back to what we would consider more normal levels. Yes, it's still down, but it's certainly a lot better than earlier this morning after it dropped more than a thousand points within a few minutes of the open. That sudden drop left a lot of people feeling nervous this morning. I'm Virginia Chop. And I'm Jason Martinez. Definitely uh, there was a big sell off right away this morning. We're going to try to sort through all of this for you. And joining us today is market expert Dennis Brewer. Dennis, thanks for being here. Here. Well, thank you. Uh, and I know when these things happen, uh, the advice normally for people with 401ks, Roth IRAs, et cetera, is to stay the course, don't panic. Right. It's very difficult. Everybody hears that. But when you get in the middle of a, right. especially a day like this morning when we're down a thousand points before you're hardly even up, it, it's, it's a tough thing to do sometimes. I see, as it were, ah, bloodshed in many parts of the Caribbean. As it pertains to the church, he declared that three significant voices of the church will be taken home. A great gospel artist, a famous evangelist, and a famous pastor. This will be a sign that the transition has begun in the church. For he saw a large number standing before the great white throne, but only a few gray-headed men. A great company of young men are getting ready to fly like eaglets a Joshua generation ushering the last wave of revival that will manifest in great measure, especially in 2017. He saw himself preaching to a great mass of people and many miracles being done in that year. I see, as it were, three great evangelists that God have raised up to be champion for the, for the cause. I see them dying in this year, 2015. A great evangelist that everybody know. This year, when he dies, it will be a mark to show us that a new generation is about to rise up. A man was tempted to call his name. 
But there's one that is about to come down. And after the one come down, God's about to raise up a new breed of evangelists. Some powerful preachers, young at heart, strong and mighty in God. On January 4th again, he saw another prophetic vision. This time, he saw a huge peg that fell from heaven and fastened itself in the earth, and the letters P-E-G written on it. The Lord then revealed to him that the mandate from heaven to earth was to fasten our peg as a sure peg that cannot be removed. The peg, P-E-G, represents the three areas for intense focus and interest within 2015, which would be prayer, evangelism, and giving. He encouraged the people to get deeper into prayer mixed with fasting, especially in the first part of the year. And as our souls are afflicted to fast, to pray three things personally, to pray for directions, to pray for our little ones, our children, and to pray for our substance, according to Ezra 8, 21, which declares, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. I prophesy, for I see the hand of God touching the island of Jamaica and I see the nation getting ready and getting right for revival and getting right for economic turnaround. The only thing that will stop Jamaica from turning around is a natural disaster. That is why I call you to pray for Jamaica because we cannot bear or stand a natural disaster. Some folks, and I'm not being political, but there is a part of recovery that God is putting upon this land because God's hand is about to bless this land, but God is removing corruption from the land. Hear me, friends. Hear me. I see the hand of God about to move in this year 2015. And those who know their God and those who are strong in their God shall prosper. I see God raising up some million years. Oh, I wish somebody could have seen me that I'm a bishop attacking up. I see God overturning some wickedness. Within three months of this year, the first three months, January, February, March, run hard, pray hard, move after God. Because when it touch March, when it touch April, May, June, there's going to be times of shaking. But in the midst of the shaking, some of us will be rising. No doubt, this man of God has a prophetic reputation. You as an here to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the nations, and even to individuals. Thank you for watching.